this is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar series on significant changes in ASCE 722. We are trying to cover the very extensive changes between AC 716 and AC 722 in uh, 10 of these web seminars. Uh, in the first one, we covered uh, the general provisions, design load combinations, dead loads, live loads. The second seminar was devoted entirely to snow loads because there are big changes there. Uh, the last one, part three, was on chapter 11 of AC7, which is earthquake design criteria, mainly the, the earthquake ground motion parameters that we use in design. There are big changes in that area. Today, in part four, we will go on to chapter 12, which is seismic design of building structures. This is the, the heart of seismic design. And, and there are, as you will see, uh, many, many very significant changes. So we are again talking about changes between AC 716, uh, which is adopted by the 2018 and the 2021 IBC to AC 722, which is adopted by the 2024 IBC, which isn't out yet. So the entire, entire seminar will be devoted to chapter 12, seismic design requirements for building structures, as I mentioned already. Uh, section 12.1, is uh, <clears throat> it is called structural design basis it is it's general uh, requirements that have not changed 12.2 is structural system selection this is where we have the big table 12.2-1 the table of structural systems where we have the R, omega sub zero, and C sub D values given for the structure of the seismic force existing structural systems that we are allowed to use. Now we have major additions to that table uh, that have to do with coupled shear walls. So I will start there. Uh, I have found that the term couple shear wall is not uh, universally understood. So, so I will start with that. A, a couple shear wall is where two shear walls, it can be more than two, are linked together at every floor level through beams above typically above the window or door openings. These beams are called coupling beams. And, and when two shear walls are coupled by those coupling beams, it is called a coupled shear wall, okay? When a coupled shear wall is subject to lateral loads as shown in the second picture, the, uh, <clears throat> the shear forces in the coupling beams will add up to tension in one of the walls and compression in the other wall. The couple due to the tension and compression forces will resist part of the overturning moment due to the lateral loads, leaving only the remainder of the overturning moment to be resisted by the bending moments in the shear walls. Okay. So, so a large part of the overturning moment due to the lateral loads is resisted by the couple due to the tension and compression forces in the two walls, leaving only the remainder of the overturning moment to be resisted by the bending moments in the shear walls. So, so, so through the use of this system, 
we can spare the shear walls from damage uh, until late into earthquake excitation. Okay? Now, if the coupling beams are strong, short, stocky, then the, the tension compression couple is much larger than the bending moments in the shear walls. And then the behavior uh, uh, <clears throat> approaches that of an isolated wall. If the coupling beams are slender and, and flexible and weak, then the two couple, the two shear walls tend to act independently. Then it is like two isolated shear walls. Okay.